so today we will be discussing about pancreatic cancer uh, its evaluation clinical presentation um, and management uh, that would help you to make the data entry into the system introduction pancreatic cancer is the 12th most common cancer in the world and fourth leading cause of cancer related deaths but in india it's still lower in incidence and as well as as the leading cause of mortality it is the 24th most common cause of cancer and 18th leading cause of cancer related deaths only 15 to 20 percent of the uh, diagnosed pancreatic cancer patients are uh, resectable or curable uh, pancreatic cancer is one of the most lethal and aggressive malignancies the risk for developing this tumor is equal in both men and women here you can see the global incidence pattern india is uh, still more than 11th in incidence as you can see from the color coding so this is the story of gastrointestinal cancers overall burden here it accounts for uh, in the top 10 most common cancers as far as incidence and also the mortality due to the cancer related deaths are concerned. Baseline history uh, Surgical resection is the only potentially curative treatment in pancreatic cancer but unfortunately because of the late presentation only 15 to 20 percent of the patients are candidates for surgery. This uh, pancreatic ductal adenocarcinoma that is PDAC it is a malignant disease of the exocrine pancreas with a poor prognosis and a 5 year survival rate lower than 5%. Many risk factors both environmental as well as genetic have been identified the most important of which are excessive body weight, diabetes and smoking. <coughs> uh, coming to the symptom and uh, clinical presentation uh, pancreatic cancer is a silent disease with few or no symptoms and signs until late stages. The most common presenting symptoms in patients are pain, jaundice and weight loss. Compared with the tumors in the body and tail of the pancreatic gland, the pancreatic head tumors are most often present with the jaundice, steatoria and weight loss. Investigations, the routine blood investigations like complete blood count, uh, renal function test, liver function test, albumin, uh, they are to be done. Also, in selected cases, we may be doing amylase, lipase, EEA as well. Uh, tumor marker like CA19.9 is important in pancreatic cancer, either for diagnostic purpose and also for follow-up. And microscopy, that's small biopsy, either in the form of true cut biopsy, which is often not feasible for pancreatic masses. We would be doing an EUS guided FNAC in majority of the patients. And molecular testing, this BRCA mutation and MSA testing are important in pancreatic cancer. These are the most common genes that are affected and with the relative risk for increased incidence of pancreatic cancer in each mutations. We may not be doing all these tests for all patients, but we may have data for BRCA1, 2 and also the MSH2, MLH1, MSH6, PMS and PMS2. That's nothing but the microsatellite instability IHC proteins. Uh, pathology for uh, resected cases you have to look into uh, tumor size, number of nodes resected, immunohistochemistry if it's available because uh, in uh, very rarely only we would be doing immunohistochemistry in pancreatic cancer especially to rule out this neuroendocrine differentiation and all and lymphovascular invasion if mentioned and also stage that I would be discussing next. So this is the TNM staging that uh, accounts to the tumor size, uh, regional lymph node involvement and with or without metastatic disease. And according to the TNM classification you can find out the stage, stage 1, 2, 3 or 4. Radiology, usually ultrasound would be done for all patients as an initial investigation because of its low cost and easy availability. 
and CT MRI or PET CT to confirm the finding in the ultrasound and also to complete the staging to determine where all the disease involvement is there. And uh, ERCP and MRCP, that's endoscopic or MRI retrograde cholangiopancreatic graphy, uh, they have high sensitivity around 90 to 95%. And uh, EUS also would be done especially to take FNSs. Coming to the treatment, here you can see, and if we consider 100 patients with uh, pancreatic cancer, 80 to 85 percent will be unresectable. They could be uh, 35 to 40 percent locally advanced and 45 to 50 percent metastatic, that's stage 4 disease. And coming to the 15 to 20 percent resectable stage 1 true disease, even if we approach with a curative intent, 75% of the patients will have relapsing disease and only 10 to 20% of the patients will be alive at 5 years even in stage 1 2 disease. 1 to, 2, 1 to 3 percent of the patients may can die in surgery as well. So as from this chart you can see how difficult disease it is to treat. So this is uh, if we take the 100% of the patients uh, complete resection is feasible in 50% uh, and only 25% of the patients may receive adjuvant chemotherapy. Um, so resectable and pancreatic patients we can approach two ways. Either they can uh, we can plan surgery for them first then after 6 to 8 weeks of period we can consider adjuvant treatment that's a gemcitabine with capacitabine or modified Wolferinox or gemcitabine or 5-FU with or without RT. Uh, but another concept is that even though they are resectable, we can consider neoadjuvant treatment, chemotherapy with or without radiation. But that's not yet practically used in majority of the centers. Maybe it can be considered only under clinical trial setting. And later they should undergo surgery as well. And uh, when it comes to locally advanced pancreatic cancer, what we can usually do is give two months of initial chemotherapy and uh, then check for response assessment. If they are in still in good performance status, we can go ahead with chemo radiation and uh, of course in the absence of any progressive disease in between. So induction chemotherapy, usually gemcitabine based multi-drug chemotherapy is used for Three to four cycles then we can consider a consolidation radiotherapy or even continue chemotherapy as well so these are the major factors that that will help us to get which chemotherapy uh, to be chosen performance status presence of any comorbidities uh, what is the extent of obstruction as far as bilirubin levels are concerned and uh, the best regimen of choice should be for Furinox, but in our setting, most of the patients would not be fit to receive this toxic regimen. So, we would choose between either gemcitabine with the NAPAC Ritaxel or gemcitabine alone. When there is a PS3 or 4 with the major comorbidity combinations, then only best supportive care is also one treatment option. Uh, then palliative care is always included in the management of pancreatic cancer to improve symptoms for pain relief to improve quality of life and also to prolong life palliative care is not a curative treatment option but by doing the tumor control and shrinkage we can alleviate the symptoms and uh, we can improve the patient's clinical profile response assessment clinical examination uh, will be routinely done. CN 19.9 19 .9 monitoring, any imaging, either ultrasound CT or MRI or PET CT, once in four to six months interval would be done. Follow up also, uh, clinical examination at frequent intervals, CN 19.9 .9 monitoring, and also imaging. Relapse uh, it can be diagnosed during follow up. Uh, during CA 19.9 .9 monitoring and also through imaging. <coughs> Curative approach statements are not feasible once they are diagnosed with recurrence and metastatic disease. 
the palliative treatment would be chosen for these patients. The treatment toxicity and rehabilitation. Once these patients become metastatic, this group of cancers have worse prognosis and long-term treatment related setbacks are not found to be significant.